Hey, ice cream lovers, it's Steve Christensen here. You just found me potting around the uh, recipe section here at Scoop School. Look, thanks for dropping in. It's nice to have you here. We are broadcasting from the crossroads of the West here in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, look, I think we've hit over 500 videos on this channel. I hope they're helping you. Look, as the self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, that's our goal is to get good information to you so you can help open, grow, promote your ice cream business. This episode, we want to thank the good folks at Carpajani. They are the biggest manufacturer of ice cream machines on the planet. Batch freezers, soft serve machines, uh, whipped cream machines, you name it, they've got it, Carpajani. The link is down below. Thank you for the good folks at Carpajani and helping us provide this content for you. Okay, we get a lot of questions about um, different recipes, toppings, that kind of thing. And one of them that we get all the time is, how to thin Nutella or how to thin some thicker pastes. I'm going to refer to a link down here below where I actually went to the Nutella stand at the Seagip show and was basically told by the Nutella people that you should never, never be thinning out Nutella. Now, come on. We want to use Nutella in a whole bunch of different things. This is how we've done it. Maybe you've got your own way of doing it. So. A couple of things you're going to need. Now, obviously, uh, you'll want to buy bulk Nutella where you can. The bigger the container, the better. We're trying to keep an eye on food costs. I heat this container up a little bit in the microwave. You can see it's quite viscous. And then we're just going to pour it into our container. Now, I'll tell you the nice thing. You want to get a container that's got some sort of flexibility. I really like these plastic containers. You'll see at the end, we're going to actually put all of this into a squeeze bottle. So this is pure, unadulterated Nutella that has been heated up. I'm not going to get myself all dirty and get everything out, but you do want to make sure that you get everything out of this container. It's expensive. Uh, it's good, but it's expensive. So uh, we'll start with that. Now, the next you're going to want to do is put some oil in here. Goom, goom. Next, you want to put some... <laughs> I got a little bit of my finger. Next, you're going to want to put some oil in here to thin it out because when this gets back up to room temperature, or if for whatever reason you've got to put it back in the fridge, it'll really solidify. There's a lot of different oils on the market. The most clean tasting oil is grape seed oil. It's probably one of the most expensive. So if you want a nice clean taste, grape seed oil or palm oil, you'll find that palm oil is already in the ingredient deck here. So it's not adding anything that's too foreign but you want a nice clean oil, but you want it somewhat inexpensive as well. We're always looking at food costs. It really comes down to vegetable oil or canola oil. My concern with canola oil sometimes is that it can have, depending on how it's cooked and processed, it can have kind of a fishy taste to it. And you want a nice clean oil that's relatively inexpensive. We just basically just use vegetable oil. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Obviously it's up to you as to how thin or how thick you want this. But if I just put a dollop in there, let's say an ounce or so, I'm going to get my blender. I love these little hands-free blenders. And just start off nice and slow. It's a variable speed blender. And you can kind of just see that oil that you're putting in here get added to the Nutella. Your call as to how thick you want this. Um, again, I stop every now and again, kind of lift it up, see if it pours nice and neatly. It does, which is nice. So we probably won't want too much more in here. Just get that product off the side, give it another hit. And we've thinned out our Nutella. We've done it in such a way that um, it's cost effective. Goink, goink. And um, it's easier to pour. And one of the reasons why I like uh, these bendable bowls is that you can kind of bend it and put it in here. Clink, clink. Okay, so I'm going to take our bowl, pour it in here. You can do it with a rigid bowl, but honestly, the process is a lot easier when you can uh, fold the bowl per se. Um, you'd get a spatula and basically clean that off on the side, take it all down. You've got your squeeze bottle. You may need to just cut the top off that squeeze bottle, but now you've got something eyes up here. Now you've got something that's kind of quite um, easy to pour. It doesn't need to be refrigerated unless it's out for long periods of time. The same process can be done for peanut butter. The same process can be done for cookie butter. Any kind of thick or thicker paste can be thinned out by oil. Do some experimentation. You want a nice inexpensive but clean tasting oil. Um, I'd warm this up first before you put it in 
because there is a lot more churning action to be done when you've got room temperature peanut butter trying to add oil to it. And you may want to just kind of look at peanut oil uh, when you're doing this, not to detract from the taste. Anyway, have a bit of an experiment. People love the fact that you've got different toppings in your store, not just your hot fudge, caramels, and strawberries. You, know, you can do a range of different products. Look, if it's National Peanut Month, Go ahead and do free peanut butter topping upgrade. The, the world's your oyster when it comes to it. Nice, easy process, nice and food safe. Keep an eye on things. And interested to see whether you make any of your toppings uh, there or you add any oils to your toppings. Let us know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Have a look at the Nutella video down below. And also have a look at the Carpajani link down below. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.